today's Brown Bag session, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today, we proudly present you Mr. Ignaz Schops. He's director of the Belgian NGO Regional Landscape. And today he will talk about how biodiversity and natural ecosystems relate to climate change, farming, food, and health. Thank you, Mr. Schops, for being with us today and giving us an answer to the exciting question, what about the principles of a sustainable brown bag? Thank you very much. And the floor is yours, Mr. Schops. Thank you, Monica. And uh, yeah, hello to everyone. So uh, I was just talking to Monica because in Belgium, you, we have already Eastern holidays. Not for me, but a lot of students are at the moment uh, on holiday. So, uh, yeah, thank you for giving me the opportunity to give a kind of a lecture brown bag, uh, brown bag session. And maybe I have chosen a kind of different approach, I think. So uh, I will try to do so. I will share my screen now and then go ahead. And uh, if you have questions, I don't know what is, is the pr procedure, Monica. Do we do it afterwards, I thought? Yes, questions at the end, please. So, okay, here I go. I think this is on presentation mode, mode now. So firstly, I would like to say something, if this goes now, I would like to say something about myself. So as Monica was saying, I'm a director of an uh, NGO, Regional Landscape Campen and Maasland. So Regional Landscape, that's, you can compare that with Deutsche Naturparke or uh, areas of standing natural beauty in the United, uh, in, in the United Kingdom or the Parc Naturel Régional uh, en France. In, in, in France. Uh, I'm an honorable doctor for the Hasselt University in Belgium. Um, and I have a team of 14 people here working on a really huge uh, projects. Uh, what you see, two of them you see at the right hand side. Uh, one is uh, about World Heritage or Camper Rural Industrial Transition Landscape that is on the moment on hold. We are preparing the next phase. And the other one is one in preparation is the UNESCO Man, Man and Biosphere Reserve uh, Campenbrook, which we will apply for in the yeah, next coming months. So we are working uh, already closely with UNESCO from that point of view. Uh, because of my work locally and internationally, I got what they call the Green Nobel Prize in 2008, the Goldman Environmental Prize, the largest na nature prize in the world. I'm an Ashoka Fellow that's on social entrepreneurship. I'm a full member of the Club of Rome in Europe. I'm uh, an ambassador for Al Gore in his climate leadership corps. I was the former president of Europark Federation uh, for seven years, so I ended my maximum term at the end of last year. I'm also a full member of Rewilding Circle Europe, of Rewilding Europe, and I am the initiator of the Klimatsag, which is about climate litigation, uh, which would, uh, I think is now very interesting to follow because there are 2,000 uh, climate court cases running at the moment globally. I was lucky that I could talk to this guy twice in my life, uh, Edward O. Wilson, which is seen as one of the biggest uh, scientists still living. And uh, the last time when I met him at the conference of the IUCN, the International Union for the Conservation of Nature in Hawaii, he told me this, uh, the most dangerous worldview is the worldview of those who have not viewed the world. And that's maybe a first point I would like to make, make this. Of course, we have to, to, uh, we have to see and look to the world. We have to have a global view to see and to feel and to, can, uh, to, to work better at the local uh, position. Lots of people know this, of course, and so it's about how do we look to the world, how do we see what we see, and you can see different things to, from, from the same point of view, and you see an old lady's face or uh, just a fragment of a very young lady's uh, uh, face. Or you can see a rabbit or a duck in the next, uh, on the right hand side of this slide. So it's about looking, experiencing, seeing what we see, discussing about it. And that's maybe also good for today to have a discussion about the green bag principles. 
but of course it's code red for humanity antonio guterres the secretary general of the united nations was announcing that last year already that uh, yeah we are now facing a huge huge problem with uh, the silent collapse of our planet of our natural ecosystems and if we cannot halve the carbon emissions in the next decade and if we cannot stop biodiversity loss, loss and climate uh, ecosystem degradation we uh, yeah we are having and we will have huge problems uh, with tipping points as they call them uh, and which will be very harmful for ourselves but also a lot of other living species as well there is um a very interesting scientist in Sweden uh, that uh, brought these planetary boundaries uh, forward, uh, where we try to live within these boundaries. And you see uh, that of, of these boundaries, we have the biodiversity, we have the biochemical flaws with nitrogen and phosphor as a big problem. And of course, climate change, where we are not reaching the huge problem, but we are uh, going very fastly into a very let's say, dangerous situation where the last IPCC report of last, I think yesterday, the day before yesterday, was not bringing very promising news again, and that we are now on the, on the road to 3.4 degrees Celsius, which is not a good case. So if we think that COVID is something really, really, uh, yeah, pressing and, and, and uh, a huge problem then you see that there is a lot to come if we don't take the right measures if we don't take the right positions huh? so what i would like to bring is of course that in a in a way it's very simple eh? it's a, for me it's a simple fact that if we feel that we are sick and with covid a lot of people did but also if you feel just one degree uh, warmer with the temperature we feel sick and we go to the doctor but if our planet is heating is warming we don't make the same decisions which is strange in a way so we could read we could read the world by reading our body so it's very interesting to see how simple things can be as well and for sure if you work with a, a broader audience uh, where you have to communicate with uh, say local uh, stakeholders it's always good to try to translate science into simple facts that uh, you can use where people also can remind them later of that this is the position. That's another picture and you will see I use a lot of pictures to bring stories forward. So it's a simple choice if we, if we do give the opportunity to people to choose between the right or the left, 90% uh, of the people know that they will choose for the green one so if we have to decide on this way it's very simple but of course it's more and more complex for sure also in the uh, unesco context because if you see what we want to do is first we would like to have examples of yeah extraordinary uh, regions uh, in the world but on, on the other hand to become more and more sustainable uh, and going forward to basics, as I said, not back to to to, to the few, to the basics, but forward to basics. Then you see that it's all inclusive. That we have to take into account biodiversity, of course, but it's also about our food. So about agriculture, it's about what we drink, the the clean water, and it's about our health, because we think often that biodiversity is uh, just about the birds and the bees, and that's a huge and a huge mistake also from the farmer community and the health community because what we now know scientifically and maybe you know it better is that the soil biodiversity so the biodiversity that we don't see with the microorganisms uh, is decreasing as fast as biodiversity is uh, globally decreasing a thousand times faster than ever reported before uh, so also at the food Organization, World World uh, Food Organization, they know now that biodiversity is declining, and it will become a huge problem for our food production in the future if we don't take measures for that. Same story counts for our health. Uh, I don't know if you know, but we have approximately 100 trillion living, uh, yeah, species in and on our body. 
so also ecosystems of very, very tiny little things, but also there our body biodiversity is really decreasing at the same rate. So talking about nature is talking about ourselves, is talking about our environment, is talking about our food, and of course also talking about biodiversity because that's the root, that's the cradle where everything uh, was once made. Huh? So of course, this is the cradle for life. What is very known, I think, at the uh, UNESCO level, at the UN level for sure, is that the sustainable development goals that were agreed upon in, uh, in New York in 2015 are, yeah, let's say, the guiding line to the next, to the future. But I'm very, I'm very much uh, into the presentation like I did it here. And I, for me, it should be the only way to present the sustainable development goals, but because there's, you see a switch or let's say, or an evolution, you could say, from uh, sustainable development, the, 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 the sustainable development, the new, let's say, uh, image of sustainable development is that the biosphere is the basis of everything else. If we don't have a vital biosphere, we don't have a vital society and we don't have a vital economy. So there are interconnected, but the biosphere is the basis for life, for society and for economy. So that's very important also to have a kind of a guiding line where we work upon and we have to do it locally and globally as well. And that's the next uh, slide, uh, of course, that uh, when you view the world, uh, it's also good to uh, become local, huh? to find local solutions for global challenges. And this is not simple huh? because uh, Austria has a different kind of landscape than Belgium or South America, wherever you go. So this means that you, that if you work on sustainability, where let's say the rural area uh, becomes part of it, you need to have different skills as a kind of tailor work that you need uh, to, to work with, uh, with all these stakeholders where you're working with or with all the scientists where you, uh, uh, who you work with. So that needs skills and capacities, and that looks like a yeah, Swiss knife, of course. But brown bags, they can be obvious sometimes. You know what you buy, you know what you get. You go to, for this uh, example, you go to the McDonald's and then what's inside it, you eat it, of course. It's very obvious and people do that and it, it is uh, promoted as something very delicious and it can be delicious. But of course, about sustainability and uh, carbon uh, relation, we don't know too much. So brown bags can be obvious, but on the other hand, brown bags can dilute because what you see here on the slide, a brown bag that says organic, the question then is what is organic? Is the bag organic or is what we put inside organic? So we have to watch out what we do and my message here is the bag is who we are, of course. Huh? The brown bag is who we are. And so the products we buy is a decision we do, of course, we, we take, of course. So that's why, of course, we need to really look uh, into the bag as well. So brown bags can be dilute. So here all, only the paper bag is organic. But on the other hand, and that's the, the advantage is that brown bags can seduce. Because if the story is correct, something beautiful can happen because the organic brown bag can tell a story about where you come from, where you are, where, which place you are visiting, and with even maybe a, a, a more tasty uh, lunch that you would uh, like to have or you could have with also information inside it. So it can be a uh, very... Uh, seducing to have these kind of organic brown bags. So, and if you look inside, you see the world outside. That's what the story is all about. Value is in the eye of the beholder. And the, uh, that's maybe the most important lesson, lesson or message I would like to bring because a polar bear or a wolf or whatever plant or uh, animal, they don't bring the value we decide we human beings give value so that's why we need to seduce for the right ways and with the right materials people to give value 
Uh, and that's important. We give value. Uh, Woof doesn't go to the European uh, uh, Union and uh, is, pleading, is, is making his statement. No, it's we people do that for biodiversity, for natural ecosystems. So beauty is something what can really bring bring added value, I think, because so many beautiful landscapes, nature reserves, whatever, uh, man and biosphere reserves can really do the trick. Uh, they can be sustainable, regenerative, they can be circular, they can, people can be hospitable. We need to be cooperative, co-creative, co open, inclusive, and helpful. All the things you know about, of course. But there is something else, I think, that could really uh, be brought to the message and also brought to the uh, international community. And that's what I presented now on the slide. And you don't know maybe what it is. It's organic what you see, and you see something which is uh, what they say, latte macchiato. Everybody knows latte macchiato, a coffee. But for me, latte is something else as well, and it's very important. Latte macchiato, uh, latte is something uh, which can be uh, set as an acronym uh, for a very interesting principles. And that for me are the brown bags principles. Latte, that stands for local, authentic, traceable, and trustworthy. So if we can produce brown bags with a content that is local, authentic, traceable, and trustworthy, we can bring a lot of joy, a lot of love, a lot of beauty back to the region as well. And that's so important. Latte, I didn't uh, say invented uh, this uh, acronym. It's, it's, it's invented by the trend watchers, the world trend watchers, who had, I think, 10 years ago, a kind of conference, an international conference uh, on how to become successful in the future. And they came to the conclusion that if we can become latte proof, we can become successful in the future. And that's exactly, I think, the work where all environmentalists, where whatever you are doing or, or studying or dealing with, let's say, a sustainable for a sustainable world, really have to take into account that we can be latte, we can prove uh, latte to the audience because it's tasty and the taste of nature can be very interesting and very beautiful to do so. Because really, I think that if we work like that, we have golden eggs in our basket. Uh, and golden eggs is something, is a metaphor, of course, but it says something very important. So the golden eggs, they don't come uh, alone, of course. They don't come for free. They come because we have to feed the chicken. And the chicken, if we don't feed the chicken, as, as read or, or listen it or understand it as if we don't take care for, the, for our landscapes, for our beautiful environments, well, there won't be golden eggs uh, anymore. So we have to feed the chickens as well. Huh? Because uh, what I said is a multiple win. So it's, and that's the other thing. We need to now uh, go for the cohesion, for the inclusi in, in, inclusiveness, where we try to include partners, people, organizations, politicians into the story because we have to do it together. We cannot do it uh, by our own. So it's a multiple win to look to the future through these eyes from integration. Because we have to know that our natural ecosystems are our sponges. So they keep the water if it is, flow, uh, if it is raining hard, huh? if there are really uh, devastating periods from the weather. They are our fridge, so they cool the temperatures. And also they are our health centers because they make us uh, healthy again. And we have seen that, of course, with uh, uh, COVID, uh, that so many people uh, went outside to heal themselves. It's the only thing we could do, but people rediscovered the beauty and also the healthiness of, uh, let's say, beautiful and natural ecosystems. The other thing, and that's my, I think, nearly to the end um, of the multiple win is that now what we see is that we, if we invest in nature and in natural ecosystems, and it can be man and biosphere reserves or 
national parks or whatever uh, UNESCO World Heritage sites uh, related to natural heritage, then you see that uh, one euro invested in nature uh, brings back 10 euros to the local community. We see that now internationally, we have done research uh, in Belgium, but also in Finland, but also in the United States, the national parks come to this kind of conclusion, one euro in nature brings 10 euros to the local community, which is, if you look at from with other eyes, it's the best banking, a bank company in the world. So this is my last slide. Uh, we have to save the planet to save ourselves. And then the last uh, sentence where all people know the first two lines of think globally and act locally, but there's a third one that says change personally. Thank you. And I wait for your questions. I stop my will ensure nature conservation in the 21st century. Be part of the new four semester part-time master program. Corinthia University of Applied Sciences.